All right, well, EVs are piling up amid the resistance to the green agenda. O'Leary Ventures Chairman Kevin O'Leary joins us now. Kevin, good to have you on the show. You travel all around the country. I think this data on EVs is interesting. 93 days of inventory for EVs compared to 54 for gas-powered cars. I get the sense that people are balking at Bidenomics. Is that your sense? Well, you know, I'm actually thinking that this is very good we're having this narrative because it's not just about EVs. It's about the transition from hydrocarbons to green and the pace at which that should occur. EVs get captured in that because, obviously, in order to operate an EV successfully, you're going to do that in a metropolitan area because you don't have to drive past 200 miles a day, but it's not going to work in the rural economy where we still need gasoline because you're driving thousands of miles a month. And so I look at this saying, good, okay, let's have this conversation. Let's talk about all of these issues because we're going into an election cycle and all of a sudden, at a time when no one thought this would be a big debate, we've watched what's happened in Ukraine and Europe and we're talking about energy, independence and security. And now it's one of the top three agenda items in the election, which is absolutely great. And it's being highlighted by this bill. A lot of people, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, never thought this would adjust for inflation, never thought it would help. When you turn on the spigot of government spending on either side of the aisle, that is how you get inflation. Mm -hmm. At some point, you have to stop printing money. So the anti-inflation bill, or whatever you want to call it, is just printing money. Now, where that money goes is the narrative today. I love the fact it's being debated. I love it's being questioned. But above all, what I like about it is we're talking about energy and where it should come from because you cannot have prosperity in America without energy and energy security. So now, all of a sudden, people are saying, wait a second, all of these alternative ideas can't happen fast enough. we got to go back to what we know is working. So now we're re-examining oil, gas, and they should be part of the discussion. And frankly, I think it's a good thing because they are going to be looked at, and now we can make them and do them in a clean fashion. So I get the clean agenda. I get it. Everybody wants a better outcome in terms of how we transition. But I'm going to start funding refineries because we can build them clean now and yeah. we can do it in a way that's never been done before. We haven't built one since 1977. So there, I love that narrative. Well, let's stick with this story. I want to get your take on this. A wind giveaway, they're calling it, Kevin. New Jersey is letting a foreign company keep tax credits that the governor had promised to residents that were going to offset their higher energy costs. Um, you were... You broke the news on our program that you were going to build this refinery, and you just mentioned it. So I want to talk about what the status is with respect to permitting, moving forward. Um, is there anything new that you can tell us? Yes, I've advanced in North Dakota. That's the closest opportunity. They're the most progressive because they've solved the solution of taking the flare and putting it underground. So we're able to do that in their unique geology. It's, it's farther along than it was 90 days ago, and I realize all of these things move slowly, but I'm not stopping. And I'm happy to put a wind farm right beside it, but it doesn't solve the mm -hmm. problem of energy independence. That's, I'm, I'm happy with wind, I'm happy with solar, I'm happy with everything. But right now, I'm a realist, right. and I'm concerned about how we provide energy for prosperity for every single bipartisan taxpayer in the country. And finally, I'm getting the ear of everybody saying, you know, he's not crazy. You can't solve the problem with wind. You can't solve it with solar. You can't solve it with any one of these new ideas. We have to work with what we know works, and that's hydrocarbon. So bring that back into the discussion. And yes, I'm advancing. Mm -hmm. And it's not the only state. Also talking with Oklahoma and Texas, I will not stop until I've built some refineries because it's the right thing to do for America. Well done. Uh, meanwhile, Kevin wanted to pivot. We got the NFIB Small Business Optimism Survey this month. Underneath the headline may be some cracks, but the overall index is hitting a seven-month high. Is that what you see and hear from the small businesses, the entrepreneurs that you speak with as well? No, that's not what I hear, and I live in the real world. I'm here on the Hill today in Washington talking to everybody I can about the problems I've got in just getting working capital for small businesses. Mm -hmm. We have a crisis emerging. These rapid rate hikes that have occurred, unprecedented speed of these hikes, have put my small businesses, and I'm talking about companies with five to 500 employees, which represent over 60% of our economy, 
you know, if you're in the S&P 500, you have no trouble fi financing your business. Mm -hmm. You can't say that about small business anymore. The cost of capital has gone through the roof. And so I'm urging everybody to listen to me on the Hill today. I'm walking up and down the hall saying, let's tell small business how to survive this pending crisis. And the program that I'm really talking up is the employee retention credit, which none of these small businesses have applied for yet. And I want everybody on the Hill to let their constituents know they should apply for it. Because we've got a real crisis coming here. There is no, there's no cash for small businesses. Mm -hmm. And when the Fed rate raises rates another 50 basis points, that's going to make it worse. So, no, I'm not happy. And mm -hmm. I'm in the real world talking to CEOs of small companies that are family-owned in America in almost every state every day. They're not happy either. So I'm not mm -hmm. listening to that data. I'm dealing with reality. And that's why we love having you on the program. Kevin, thank you so much thank for the realistic you. view. Really appreciate it.